Helen Brooke Tosik Helen Brooke Tosik was born on May 24, 1898. Helen Brooke Tosik was known for the founding figure of pediatric cardiology. Tosik was an American cardiologist working in Baltimore and Boston who founded the field of pediatric cardiology. She is credited with developing the concept for a procedure that would extend the lives of children born with tetralogy of Farrett, the most common cause of blue baby syndrome. This concept was applied in practice as a procedure known as the Blalock Thomas Tosic shunt, that is BT Tosic shunt. The procedure was developed by Alfred Blalock and Vivian Thomas, who were Tosic's colleagues at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. Tosic was partially deaf following an ear infection in childhood. In early adulthood, this progressed to full deafness. To compensate for her loss of hearing, she learned to use lip reading techniques and hearing aids to speak with her patients. Tosik also developed a method of using her fingers rather than a stethoscope to feel the rhythm of their heartbeats. Some of her innovations have been attributed to her ability to diagnose heart problems by touch rather than by sound. Tosik is also known for her work in banning thalidomide and was widely recognized as a highly skilled physician. She was the first woman to be elected head of the American Heart Association. She was more proud of the fact that she was the first pediatrician to be elected head of the AMA and in 1964 she was awarded a Presidential Medal of Freedom. The concept of Bladock Thomas Tosic shunt. Tosic's early career in pediatric cardiology at John Hopkins consisted of studying babies with congenital heart defects and rheumatic fever, an inflammation of the heart and other organs resulting from bacterial infection, which was at the time a major source of child mortality. In the early 20th century, rheumatic heart disease made up the majority of clinical cardiology work. Congenital heart defects were considered hopeless curiosities as the surgical means to correct them were extremely undeveloped, so relatively little could be done to prevent the early deaths of patients with these conditions. She then was hired by the pediatric department of Johns Hopkins, the Harriet Land Home, as its chief, where she served from 1930 until 1963. Tosik made use of fluoroscopy as a diagnostic tool and developed a particular interest in infants with cyanosis, that is blue tinged appearance. Often caused by the heart defect, tetralogy of Fallot, cyanosis is caused when insufficient oxygenated blood is circulating around the body. In infants, it can be known as blue baby syndrome. Tosik is most remembered for her role in the development of a surgical treatment for this condition, the Blalock Thomas Tosik shunt, known as BT Tosik shunt. A new surgery first performed in 1939 by Robert Gross corrected a common pediatric heart problem, patent ductus arteriosus. The ductus arteriosus is a small blood vessel connecting the pulmonary artery to the iota of a fetus. Since the fetus obtains oxygen via the mother's placenta and not via its own lungs, which are fluid filled and not yet functional, this vessel provides a shortcut bypassing the lungs and allowing more efficient delivery of oxygenated blood around the fetus body. In most infants, the rectus arteriosus closes within a few weeks of birth so that blood flows to the lungs to be oxygenated. If it remains open or patent, the normal flow of blood is disrupted. This new surgical procedure artificially closed the blood vessel. While this was going on, Tosik observed that infants with cyanotic heart defects such as tetralogy of Fallot or pulmonary atresia often fared remarkably better if they also had a patent ductus arteriosus, with less severe symptoms and longer survival. In general, cyanotic symptoms would often begin or worsen shortly after birth, a change which Tosik suspected was caused by the natural closure of the ductus arteriosus. In cyanotic children, blood flow from the heart to the lungs via the pulmonary artery is often compromised. Tosik thought that surgically creating an artificial ductus linking these two vessels could increase blood flow to the lungs and alleviate this problem, increasing the survival. She broached the idea to Robert Gross and he was skeptical reportedly telling her, I have enough trouble closing the ductus arteriosus. I certainly don't want to try to make an artificial one. Two years later, Tosik obtained the collaboration of John Hopkins' new chief of surgery, Alfred Blalock, and his laboratory assistant, Vivian Thomas. The three of them developed a surgery now known as the Blalock Thomas Tosik shunt. Originally, it was referred to as Blalock Tosik shunt. The critical input of Vivian Thomas was overlooked because of his non academic role and because of his race. Following extensive experimentation on about 200 dogs on November 9, 1944, Blalock and Thomas performed the surgery on the first human patient. 
that is Elian Saxon, a 15-month-old baby, had arrived at the emergency department earlier that month, severely underweight at just 5 kg, purplish blue in color and hardly able to drink a sip without gasping for breath. Tosic diagnosed her with tetralogy of Fallot, a diagnosis which meant that without intervention, she certainly would not survive to adulthood. The procedure was an immediate success. Aileen's color quickly returned to normal. She could drink milk more easily and gained a few kilograms. Two months after the surgery, she was discharged from hospital. However, she became cyanotic again a few months later and died shortly before her second birthday. Despite Aileen's death, the operation was proof that the Blalock Thomas Toe section could in principle be used to extend the lives of children with cyanotic heart disease. By 1945, this operation had been performed on a total of three infants with pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary atresia. As Alfred Blalock and Helen Tosik wrote in a journal of the American Medical Association, heretofore, there has been no satisfactory treatment for pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary atresia. A blue baby with a malformed heart was considered beyond the reach of surgical aid. During the past three months, we have operated on three children with severe degrees of pulmonary stenosis and each of the patients appears to be greatly benefited. In the second and third cases in which there was deep persistent cyanosis, the cyanosis has greatly diminished or has disappeared and the general condition of the patients is proportionally improved. Following this report and lectures given by Blalock and Tosik at conferences around Europe and America, the procedure quickly gained worldwide acceptance. With the international fame this surgery drew, parents worldwide began coming at Baltimore to have their blue babies treated by Blalock and Tosik. The rapid influx of prospective patients was so great that the clinic struggled to cope and medical visitors from around the world came to assist and to share knowledge. By 1951, the team had operated on over 1,000 children and the surgery had a mortality rate of only 5%. One of the major benefits of this surgery was that children gained the ability to play actively without the rapid exhaustion and frequent loss of consciousness that usually results from cyanotic heart defects. Helen Tosik reportedly kept a letter on her mantelpiece from 12-year-old Jean Pierre Capelan written after undergoing the procedure. I am now a completely new boy. I will be able to play with the other children. Often an immediate improvement in the level of cyanosis could be seen as well. Tosik later recalled, I suppose nothing would ever give me as much delight as seeing the first patient change from blue to pink in the operating room. Bright pink cheeks and bright lips. As a physician, Tosik pioneered the use of X-rays and fluoroscopy simultaneously to examine changes in baby's heart and lungs in a less invasive manner and she was very skilled in diagnosing heart conditions by feeling the heartbeat with her fingertips rather than listening with a stethoscope. As well, her day-to-day -day clinical work as pediatrician, Tosik was also an accomplished academic clinician. She published 100 academic articles over her career, considering various aspects of cardiology including biomedical ethics and the evolutionary origins of heart disease. In her research into the long-term outcomes of recipients of the shunt, Tosik remained in touch with many of her patients as they grew to adulthood and middle age. In 1947, after a decade of gathering material, Tosik published her magnum opus, Congenital Malformations of the Heart, considered to be the foundational text of pediatric cardiology as an independent field. The book was expanded into two volumes for a second edition published in 1960. Around 1960, many more babies than usual began to be born in Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands with phocomedia, a previously very rare condition in which limbs are absent or small and abnormally formed. The German pediatrician Widukin Lenz was the first to draw a link to the increasing frequency of this condition and thalidomide, a drug which was a popular sleeping medication at the time with the trade name Sofnon and was taken by a pregnant woman to counter morning sickness. However, when it is taken between days 35 and 49 of a pregnancy, it blocks normal limb development and causes phocomelia. After hearing about this issue from one of her students in January 1962, Tosik travelled to Germany and examined some of the children for herself. She reached the same conclusion as Lenz, that thalidomide taken during pregnancy was causing phocomelia. She flew back to America and launched a campaign to try to stop the pending approval of thalidomide by the FDA speaking at the American College of Physicians, writing in journals and magazines, and testifying before Congress in 1967. Her and others' efforts paid off. The drug was banned in the United States and Europe. Tosik formally retired from Johns Hopkins in 1963, but continued to teach, give lectures, and lobby for various courses. In addition, she kept writing scientific papers. She advocated for the use of animals in medical research and for legalized abortion, as well as the benefits of palliative care and hospice. 
In 1977, Tosik moved to a retirement community in Kennet Square, Pennsylvania. Ever active, she continued making periodic trips to the University of Delaware for research work. At the time of her death, she was researching the genetic basis for congenital heart defects in birds. On May 20, 1986, four days short of her 88th birthday, Tosik was driving a group of friends to vote in a local election when her car collided with another vehicle at an intersection. She died about an hour later at Chester County Hospital and donated her body to Johns Hopkins.